Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'll be sharing how I made 15 birthday cards using Echo Park's Magical Adventure 2 paper pad and the Magic Shape Shaker Kit from Queen & Company. I used the templates and card sketches from Kendra's card challenge number five. So if you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you use the cutting templates and the card sketches that you see here that I provide in the free PDF file to create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six by six pattern paper. Challenge five runs from January 1st to March 31st of 2022. And to enter the challenge, all you need to do is post pictures of your card creations on either Facebook or Instagram and use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 5 so I can find your photos. You'll have a chance to win one of eight prizes for this challenge. Before we get started, I hope you'll take a moment to click on that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. This is the Magic Shaped Shaker Kit from Queen & Company, and it comes with three different shapes that you can make shaker cards with the glove, the Mickey Mouse ears, and Mickey shorts. It comes with the stamp set here that has four different sentiments, the pre-cut foam shapes, some shaped acetate pieces, and dies. And here is the paper pad called Magical Adventure 2 by Echo Park, and I'll flip through and show you the papers real quick. Now this comes with 24 double-sided sheets of 12 different designs, so there's two of each pattern. Now for this particular set of cards that I made for the challenge, I chose the papers that had patterns on them that were non-directional, meaning that it doesn't matter which way you turn the paper. I didn't use a lot of these patterns or the cutter parts, but I still have plenty of paper left to make more cards. I shared this clip in my last video where I introduced Challenge 5 and I showed how to use the cutting templates to cut out each of the six papers that I chose. So rather than showing you that whole process again, I figured I would just show you the paper real quick and then I will link in the description box and above where um, you can check out that introduction video where you can see how to cut the papers. So as you can see, there's some really great designs in this paper pad. But like I said, I chose the ones that had patterns that were non-directional. I did end up using this red sheet here with the castles for one of the cards, which you'll see here shortly. And I used the stars that's on the other side for some of the other cards. So if you have a directional pattern that you want to use, just make sure that the other side is non-directional if you have double-sided paper and plan ahead to make sure you're cutting it so that your pattern will be facing the right way. Now these are the papers that I assigned to each of the cutting templates. This is A and B. And so I've got the stripes on one side and the plaid on the other for A and then the fireworks and then the blue on the other side for paper B. And then for paper C and D, I chose this red and white polka dot pattern for C and the stripes on the back. And then for paper D, I chose the black and white checkered with the plain blue on the other side. And then for paper E, this is the one with the castles. And then um, the other side of that is the stars. And then for paper F, I chose the one with all of the different colored bows on it and then the yellow checks on the other side. So like I mentioned before, I'm not going to show you the process of me cutting all six of these sheets of paper, but I did want to mention that the cutting guides do have scissors on them. So you'll know which cut to make first. These are pretty straightforward, but in the past I've kind of had some crazy cutting templates in my prior challenges. But um, I'm going to go ahead and cut up all six sheets of paper and I've placed them into the cellophane sleeves and um, they correspond with each of the card sketches. Each of the card sketches have numbers and so I've numbered my cellophane bags 1 through 15 and so uh, I've got all those ready to go and here are some of the things that I'll be using to make the cards. Now even though the solid sheets of 12 by 12 paper here have they're from the Magical Birthday Collection. It's the same colors. So I'll be using this to cut my mats and for my layers and for the top layer of my shaker pieces. Now I thought I was going to use the ephemera, but I didn't end up using it. And I did um, embellish some of the cards with the matching enamel dots. 
So the coordinating solid paper comes with six sheets of 12 by 12 paper and I only use three of them. And this is what I have left. Just this one strip of tan and a little red piece here. And my initial plan was to record the whole process but I got sick and I only filmed the process of making two cards so really this is more of a project share but I will show the process for sketches 7 and 11 and here are the cards so this is card sketch number one this is shaker card I made using the shorts and I used the Mickey shaped yellow button in the top left corner I forgot to mention that I used the Mystery Magic Embellishment Bundle from Crean & Company on most of these cards, but I forgot to show it on camera before I started making them, so I guess I'll keep that a mystery. But you will see the different embellishments that came in this bundle, including the toppings that are in most of these shaker cards. Now this is card sketch number two, and for this one I used some Lemonade Sparkle Blends from Doodles Paper Playground to fill that shaker. Um, and then I used two of the larger enamel dots for the shorts, plus some black Mickey ears, the rhinestone on the left of the sentiment. Now for this is card three, and I used the glove and that same lemonade sparkle blend for card three as well. So for card four, I used the shorts shaker on the bottom right hand corner, even though it's kind of hard to see here. Instead of putting a plain red piece behind the shorts, I left the red and white polka dot piece to show through, but I should have outlined the shorts in black so that it would stand out, stand out a little bit better. For card five, this one is not a shaker card. And rather than keeping the top part of the card base plain blue like the sketch shows, I decided to use an extra sheet of that pattern paper with the colorful castles on it as a layer before gluing the pieces down. And I used one of the little Mickey ears with the painted on shorts as the embellishment. Now here's card six. I kept this one pretty simple too. It's not a shaker. I used the two strips and I flipped one of the papers over so I wouldn't have two polka dot strips. And then of course the three rhinestone pieces to embellish it. Now we're on card number seven and this is where I'm gonna show you the whole process. I have my top folding card base here and I'm using the glove for the shaker part. I'm removing this inner piece of foam and I'll save that for another card. And I'm using this black and white checkered piece of pattern paper to go across the bottom. So for the top part, I am using the Twinkle Stencil from Whimsy Stamps. It's got some stars on it. And I've already sprayed the back with some Pixie Spray, which is a low tack adhesive that will help hold the stencil in place while I'm using it. And I decided to use this black stickles glitter gel the color is actually called dark matter and it has some different sparkly bits in it there's some glitter and then some larger sequin size pieces and um, i'm going to apply this on top of the stencil using my spatula mainly just adding it to the top area that's going to show since the bottom is going to be covered up with some pattern paper and i did speed this part up quite a bit for you and then I um, after making sure that I had it evenly covered I'm going to show you the reveal which is my favorite part whenever I use a stencil I love peeling it back so that I can see the design underneath and so I let that completely dry and so now I'm going to glue down the paper using some Nouveau Deluxe adhesive and then I'm also going to glue down that red strip. Now the 12 by 12 paper does have a white core. So I did go around it with my black Copic marker so that you couldn't see the white. And then I glued that down as well. And then I used the dies that came in the kit to cut out the glove from, from some white cardstock. And I glued the middle piece down directly onto the card base on the right hand side over some of those little stars that I stenciled on there. And then I removed the adhesive from the back of the foam piece and I placed that on top. And then I filled this glove with the red, white, black, and yellow toppings that came in that mystery magic embellishment bundle that I mentioned earlier. And then I removed the top adhesive backing on top of that foam and I placed the clear acetate piece that's cut out already in the shape of this glove. I placed that on top and then I glued down 
the white outline piece with that same liquid glue. And then off camera, I stamped the wishing you a magical birthday on a piece of white cardstock using some tuxedo black memento ink. And then I used this stitch edge banner die to cut it out. And then I placed that on top of the red strip. And I finished this card off with another one of those yellow Mickey ear buttons that I attached um, using some small glue dots. For card eight, I wrapped some red and white baker's twine around the pattern paper and the yellow mat before I glued it down and I made a bow and then I attached it with that liquid glue. I used the shorts for the shaker and I filled it with those same toppings and added the white enamel dots. For card nine, I used the circle foam piece to make this a shaker with Minnie Mouse ears and I added one of the wooden bows that came in the embellishment bundle and a light blue enamel dot in the center. For card 10, this is the one where I specifically cut the directional paper this way so that the castles would be facing the right direction. I cut an oval from some black cardstock and I placed the glove on top and filled it with just red, black, and white toppings. Now for card 11, I'll show you most of the process of how I made this card. I went ahead and glued down the three pattern pieces of paper off camera. Now this rectangle piece here with the three cutouts was cut using a die cut from, or a die from Cat Scrappiness that was in the Crafters Essentials set. I'll link it down below in case you're interested. But I cut a piece of acetate that was slightly smaller than the rectangle die cut and I glued it onto the back. And I'm using these thin foam strips from Derice to place along the edges for, of the shaker windows. Now when you're using foam tape, you just want to make sure that you butt up each of the edges to each other so that none of the shaker pieces will fall out. And so I added another strip along the bottom just to make this level. Now you don't have to use a die like this for card sketch 11, but I love the stitched edge look and the fact that you can make this into a shaker card with this die. And so what I did was I placed the toppings on top of the pattern papers and then I removed the adhesive backing from the foam tape and then I placed that on top. Now I had planned on putting some baker's twine with a bow around the bottom of the rectangle piece, but I forgot to do that before I glued this down. So I just decided not to use it. And then for the sentiment, I used a reverse sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp and I glued that down along the bottom. And then I used three of those yellow Mickey ear embellishments on top of each of those windows that I glued down with those same small glue dots to finish off the card. Now all of the products that I'm using to make these cards, I will link in the description box below in case you're interested. The Magical Adventure 2 paper pad, I wasn't able to find at any of the places that I normally shop, but I'm sure you can find it out there on maybe like eBay or something. But there are some similar paper pads by Echo Park that has these same colors. Okay, so for card 12, I used the Mickey ears in the top center of the rectangle and one of the red and white polka dot bow embellishments on top to match the pattern paper background. And then I added some red enamel dots on each side of the sentiment. Really with this sentiment, you could use it for any occasion. It says sending you smiles from ear to ear and I think that one's super cute. Okay, so for card 13, I used one of the cut aparts that came in the paper pad that said wish upon a star in the center. And so I had to turn this card to make it landscape so that it would be facing the right way. But on the shaker piece, I accidentally stuck down my foam piece a little crooked. And so you can see that white foam sticking out. So I'm going to have to fix that. Um, 
And then for card 14, I stamped the sentiment onto some white cardstock and I cut it out with the circle dies to use as the inside piece for my shaker. It says, Oh, happy day, which you can read when you shake it around. The bottom strip was from one of the pattern papers that had the stripes of different images. So I cut out a strip of bows to match the embellishment that I put on top of the Mickey ears. And now for the last card, number 15, I decided to use one of the extra papers in the pad for the background. And then I added a smaller rectangle layer from some red glitter paper and then glued my pieces down to look like presents. And then I added a bow on top and a reverse sentiment strip along the bottom. But I may go back in and add some sticker strips to outline the presents a little more. So here are all 15 of the cards I made from the Magical Adventure 2 paper pad by Echo Park and the Magic Shape Shaker Kit from Queen & Company. So just for information, I used a total of eight sheets of 110 pound heavyweight cardstock for the card bases. Seven of the sheets were light blue and one of the sheets were white. And then I also used one sheet of white 80 pound cardstock for all of my sentiments and some of the shaker pieces and then one sheet of black for some of the other parts of the cards. I uh, remember that the layers were made from those three sheets of 12 by 12 solid cardstock from the Magical Birthday Collection. A list of all the products that I used for the cards are in the description box below in case you want to check it out. I had a lot of fun making these cards and I think they turned out really cute. I really hope you like them and I hope this inspires you to get creative. Let me know which card is your favorite in the comments below. If you want to join in on this challenge, you can download the free PDF on my website at cardsbykendra.com. I'll also link it in the description box down below. And don't forget, you can have a chance to win one of eight amazing prizes from one of our sponsors. The sponsors for this challenge are Cat Scrappiness, Not Too Shabby Shop, This Calls for Confetti, Pink and Main, TLC Designs, and Whimsy Stamps. Plus, there are several additional prizes. You can see the full list of prizes on my website, and you don't have to use any particular company's products to enter this challenge. You can use what you have in your stash. This is open to card makers worldwide, and you have until March 31st of 2022 to create your cards and post them on either Facebook or Instagram using the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 5. Plus, if you have a YouTube channel and you post a video of your creations, you'll get an extra entry into the contest. Now be sure to join the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group for additional card making inspiration. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Also, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and TikTok for more card making inspiration. The links are in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day.